What's up, New Orleans? This is Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. Please welcome Sam J. What the fuck? This is so cool, man. I've been, I've been in New Orleans for like a week. Came here with my wife. <laughs> Whatever. Appropriate response, you know? We've been married a year and a half, man. Year and a half, you know? She's beautiful. I love her, but it's bad. It's bad. Marriage sucks. <laughs> That's the truth that nobody reasonable tells you. Like, anybody who tells you marriage sucks is always a shitty person. It's never a good dude. It's always like a dude who wakes up in his own vomit every morning. He's like, don't do it, bro, you know? It's never a reasonable person. It's not good, man. We fight all the time, dude. All the time. Because there's two people trying to make one life. Two people with issues, you know? Baggage. I married my wife. She was 37. I was 35. We got 35. Baggage. Baggage. <laughs> I realize this is why people got married off young. This is why they would marry girls off at 16, because she didn't know shit. <laughs> she had no ideas of the world, you know? My wife has all these ideas about independence and her own decisions. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I get to do what I want to do. <laughs> it's stressful, man. We got in a fight the other day. She was like, why don't you load the dish? I was like, you don't know my childhood. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy for no reason. Just the baggage I bring into it, you know what I mean? Trying to figure it out. And we moved fast. I'm not gonna lie, we were lesbians. We did it. We did the lesbian thing. We lesbian did this fuck up, you know? We got married super fast. We met in February, we got married in June. Lesbian style, don't judge me. I live my life how I want. It was fast. But I also feel like that's a part of why it's going bad. <laughs> Just not enough time, you know what I mean? We move too quick, that's how your stuff gets messed up. And my grandmother tried to warn me, she's like, you're moving too fast. And then it was like, yo, we really are, because my wife's already talking about kids. She's already talking about babies, you know what I mean? And I'm super excited, but just not now, but I'm ready, I want one, you know? When it's time, I'll go buy an Asian baby. <laughs> I'm gonna get a straight up Asian baby, turn it up. Go cop one of them things fresh off the lot, you know? <laughs> I'm ready. I was so amped, I went and told my grandmother about it. I was like, yo, listen, we gonna adopt an Asian baby. She started shitting on me. Tried to ruin my dream. She was like, eh, an Asian baby? You need to adopt a black baby. I was like, I got a black baby for free. <laughs> for free. If I'm gonna buy a baby, I'm gonna get the best baby I can get. <laughs> I'm about the best baby on the market. I don't invest my money, you sound stupid. <laughs> it's hard though, it's hard merging lives, you know? And we got other factors, you know what I mean? With ladies, our periods have synced up, it's crazy. No one's discussing that. The lesbian community is not, you know, message boarding about this shit. <laughs> we should be, it's a problem. The period sync up is huge. It's a huge issue, man. It's hard. We're fighting. I don't even know why. We're just two broads for one week out of every month going at it. I don't even understand why. Just emotions out of fucking control. She's in the bedroom crying over Love Actually. I'm in the living room crying over ESPN 30 for 30 documentaries. <laughs> Losing my mind. I'm over 30, so my emotions are out of whack. I'm rocking my dog like he's a baby crying. I don't know what I'm doing. We meet in the hallway, yell over Hugh, use the last tampon, cry over our daddy issues. It's bad. It's the one time where I'm like, eh, maybe this is against God. <laughs> maybe this is how nature intended the shit. Maybe we're wrong. I be wanting to call one of my homeboys up like, hey man, can you come over and bust a nut on my couch right quick? <laughs> Just so we can smell it, you know what I mean? Balance us out real quick. Put some testosterone in there. And while you're at it, open up a few jars. It's been a long month. <laughs> and I definitely like some spaghetti. <laughs> but we're doing it. We're married, and I love her. You know when you know. And it was real, like I met her, and I was like, nah, this is it. You go through enough fucked up shit, you know when it's right. You know when you know, you know? 
Like I used to have a boyfriend and that didn't work out because I'm gay, I'm so gay. <laughs> so gay. But I did try, I really buckled down. I was like, man, I'm about to give all the blowjobs. <laughs> I'm focused. And I was doing it, but it was not good, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't commit, I was like, I was like, you know, I was like. <laughs> I was giving those, I was giving those type of dick sucks. Where you, <laughs> what are you about to do, you know what I mean? Your skin's getting taut. I don't know what's happening here. Very concerned with the dick juice, you know? Can't focus and be great at it when that's your concern, the juice. Where the juice is gonna land, how it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people are great at things, they lose themselves in things. Like, Malcolm Phelps is a great swimmer, because at some point he's in the water and he's like, I am water. I was never sucking a penis and was like, I am the penis. <laughs> never. It's always like, cause it's aggressive. Like no one wants the juice on, no woman wants, like every guy's like, my girl wants my juice. No girl wants the juice, bruh. <laughs> no girl, it's always aggressive and weird. It's like, we know we have to deal in that. Like guys know they have to change tires one day. It's like a thing we're gonna have to do, you know? But it's never like a good, it's always like, where do you want it? You always like pensive, then it hits you. You feel like you got shot with an assault rifle. <laughs> it doesn't wipe off, it just moves around. <laughs> like mercury, you can't catch it, you know? You're just like, ah! How did I end up here? But I did, I was in it, you know? I was in a relationship with dude, I loved it. I loved my boyfriend, I did. I loved him as a dude, it sounds crazy, but I did. I loved him. And I was like, we could work this out. We could do this, we could have like weird eyes wide shut parties on the weekends. <laughs> Just get freaky and hang out, I'm down, you know? But he was too soft, he was a sensitive guy and it would aggravate the shit out of me, man. He would be so soft, I would get upset. I couldn't handle it, I'm an alpha, I'm so dominant. So he would say sweet stuff and I would get upset. One time he's like, oh, Samaria, you're so beautiful. I want you to be the last woman I touch. And my first thought was like, oh, this nigga's gay. <laughs> Dealing with a gay dude. <laughs> Why are you so gay? <laughs> Cause I've seen myself naked in the mirror. I don't want to be the last woman I touch. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Have you not seen Beyonce? You a gay guy, man. <laughs> then I'm a girlfriend, my first girlfriend. Huge deal. Cause I didn't even know how gay I was till I met this girl, you yeah? know? I don't know. Cause women, we teeter, we do, we play games. You kiss a girl in the club to make your boyfriend's dick hard, you do silly shit. You're not always just laying over there, you know what I mean? So I didn't know, I was like, maybe I'm just grab titties in the club gay and not go down on a chick gay. Very different gays. <laughs> Very different gays on the spectrum. But I met this girl, I was like, nah man, I'm going down on this chick, I'm ready. Huge deal, man, I was scared. I had to get myself charged up to do it. John Madden in the huddle, like, I'm gonna eat this pussy. Go, go, go. <laughs> got this. I was looking in the mirror, like, you are a champion. Don't worry. And then I got her home, and she laid down on the bed, and I realized I had never seen a vagina from this perspective. Like, I've seen mine from this perspective. <laughs> I ain't never seen it like that. I was not ready at all. I was like, oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> Started poking at it, like, mm uh. -uh. Close your legs, let's go to church. We need to pray. <laughs> you know, go on ahead and pray this gay away, girl. We all live in foul. <laughs> but that's the journey, you go through the ups and downs, that's how you find where you're supposed to land, you know what I mean? And I love my wife, I do, it's, it's, you know? She's here and I love her, she's supportive, but it's hard. She doesn't say a lot of things I care about. I didn't know that was gonna be a problem when I married. She talks a lot, but I don't give a shit about most of it. <laughs> most of it's just like, I don't, why, you know? And I got a feign interest, she knows when I'm faced. It's just terrible, man. And I wish it was there, I wish she was saying things that were more valuable to me. I really do. I wish she had more valuable things. And it's like, I know as feminists, as women, like, yeah, everything we say is, our thought, it's like, yeah, her thoughts are valuable. 
but the shit that's actually coming out her mouth, garbage. <laughs> Pure garbage. This is not good stuff. <laughs> this is pointless, man. It's never in the clutch stuff. It's never things that are gonna save my life in the moment. It's never like we're driving over a bridge and she's like, hey, hun, crack those windows just in case we go off this bridge, land in this water, you'll be able to open the door, do the pressure, swim right out, save your life. Never information like that. <laughs> never solid. It's always just like, she, I'm in the kitchen pouring a soda. She strolls by, uh, that's a wine glass. Soda doesn't go in there. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Maybe I want to drink my soda like a king today out of a goblet. I got my own plans. Mind your business. This is annoying. That's why the road is dope. It's freedom. You know, as a comic, I just get to go away. I don't got to deal with it. I just get to be on the road, live my life the way I want to live it. I don't got to live by her rules, you know? Her big thing is my weight, because she's a bitch, you know? <laughs> it's way all the time. Eat this, do this. Like, fuck you, you married me fat. What are we doing? Why is this even a conversation? <laughs> Plus, I don't give a shit. I don't care about being fat. I'm not stressed out about it. Because in America, there's always a fatter person. <laughs> always. You will always find a fatter person than you. If you're so fat, you don't see him in the street, turn on TV. <laughs> there's all types of shows about him. You'll figure it out, you know what I mean? Not worried about it. She wants me to get a Fitbit. Why? Why? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do the steps. It's a dumb man. We're gonna march. Why? It's silly. It's not gonna tell you how many steps I did. It's only gonna alert you that I passed out during the SVU marathon. <laughs> it's the farthest this thing is gonna go. I was on a boat when I found out Trump was the president. I was on a cruise. And it was crazy. I was on this cruise. I was in the middle of the ocean. We're watching on a jumbo screen, watching election results come in. We're focused, you know what I mean? Everyone's intense. And then, like, the verdict came in. I mean, the election results came in. <laughs> it felt the same. It felt very OJ-esque. <laughs> but in reverse. <laughs> and I'm watching, and it comes in. People start losing their mind. There's people who are like, we're never going back to America. And I'm like, that's not how cruises work. <laughs> You sound crazy. I got shit to do tomorrow. <laughs> We're going back. Plus, you could order weed and pizza at once in LA. Fuck you. <laughs> then there were people who were really happy. I got it. Be happy or do one. There were people that were really sad. I get it. Be sad or do lost. But there was this one lady that was confused and it was pissing me off. There was this one confused white lady. I couldn't stand it. Just in a state of, like, white lady confused too. Which, if you're a person of color in this audience, you know it's a very different confused. Cause like, <laughs> when niggas are confused, it's just like, where do we go? We stand stiff and we figure, white women are like, Ugh, you know? <laughs> I don't know, you know? It's so annoying. And I'm watching her, she's just confused as hell. And she's like, I don't know. And it was like, oh, she was like, I don't know how this could happen. How could this happen in America? And I realized like, that's what we have a problem with white people. Like white people who are just like that, like that white. You're not a white guy, you just got a white guy shirt on. That white. <laughs> You light as fuck, and you got a white guy shirt on, and it fucked me up. That white. <laughs> like, I'm willing to wear a bang in public white, you know? They think, like, we have a problem with them being white. Like, I'm just living my best white life. Why is everybody mad? No, be white. Live it up. It's your delusion that bothers everybody. Like, it's not that you gentrify a neighborhood. It's that when you do, you ride around on a unicycle in a gang territory. <laughs> That's what upsets people. <laughs> That's what people are like, fuck you, you know what I mean? I'm happy for white dudes. Old white guys, congratulations, you know? <laughs> and as Democrats, you know, if you're a Democrat, we have to accept the real reason Trump won. We have to stop blaming it on everything. White women that voted, white guys who are old. It's not the reason. Hillary just sucked really bad. <laughs> she did. She wasn't good. She was, I didn't like her. I never liked her. And I was like the audience. She, like black, lesbian, poverty. I was supposed to like her. <laughs> I did not like her, you know? 
Like Trump was never talking to me. I was never his audience. He didn't need to win me. He needed to win all those guys in El Paso that really wished they won that homecoming game in 76. Those were his guys. <laughs> I was not his audience. But Hillary, like she was supposed to be my bitch and I hated her the whole time. <laughs> like I voted for her, but only cause Barack told me to, you know? <laughs> I never wanted to. I was just like, for you, my nigga, I'll do it. But this bitch, God, I hate this bitch. She's annoying. She's annoying and she has real urban vice principal energy. Like our urban high school, like she walks around and says, Jamal, Jamal. Then asks you where your hall pass is every 10 seconds. You know, I never have a hall pass. Get the fuck out of here, Miss Clinton. You annoying, lady. Trump got cool guy energy, turnt dude energy. He's turned up the whole time, man. He won the Republican primary in the most turnt fashion. He beat two actual politicians. <laughs> two dudes who really do this. He doesn't do this. Two dudes who really do this for a living. And he beat them on the platform that his dick was bigger and their bitches were ugly. <laughs> that was it. He never tried to be smarter than them. He never tried to out-politic them. He was just like, look at they bitches. <laughs> they ugly as fuck. <laughs> you really want a president with ugly bitches? <laughs> he won on a DJ Khaled platform. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> but I will watch this stuff. Fox News, you know, then I get charged up. Like, what the hell have they lost, you know? White dudes, what the hell are they complaining about? Let me tune in. And I'm like, fuck them, man. They ain't lose shit. And they would always get to this point in their rhetoric where they talk about they're losing the country, I'd be so upset. We're losing, we're losing. What the hell do they lose? We're losing. What the hell do they lose? And then I watched three seasons of Mad Men on Netflix. Holy shit. <laughs> they lost everything. They lost everything. Cause at some point that was really their life. That's what no one understands. Like we can't think about it cause we never lived it. That was their life every day. They could wake up in the morning, <laughs> bourbon on their breath, another woman smell all over their body, <laughs> walk downstairs, kiss their wife in the mouth. She says nothing, just serves them pancakes with a perfect butter square in the middle like an Aunt Jemima box. <laughs> it's perfect pancakes. They eat hearty like a man should, you know? <laughs> jump in their American-made Cadillac, swerve all the way to work. Swerve the whole way. <laughs> they get to work, run upstairs, secretary greets them with double D tits, they have sex with her right there in the middle of the office. <laughs> Just pull the dick out, they're a white man in America, why would you hesitate? <laughs> Soon as you're done having sex with her, she says she's pregnant, you fire her. You're fired, bitch, get out of here. <laughs> Who the hell told you to get knocked up, you whore? <laughs> Go in your office, sleep off your hangover, wake up, go to a business lunch, get drunk again, and get a promotion. And that's what they did every day. <laughs> that was like their life. No interruptions. <laughs> and then like women started thinking and black people wanted to eat sandwiches next to them and no one went to shit. <laughs> they lost everything. That's why they don't want Mexicans to vote. It's a slippery slope, man. We gotta let old people be racist, man. They're gonna die. <laughs> Stop fighting with old people. It's stupid. This old people fight we've been having is done. Like, they're gonna die. Let them die, racist. What is it? Who is it hurting? Who is it really? Old people aren't gay. They just like, they vote sometimes. They eat cat food. Fuck it. <laughs> gotta put yourself in old people's shoes, man. Like if I was a Korean War vet, like a real, like a child, I went there. I got all those little weird medals on my head, the little pins. I play bingo all the time. The top of my head's dirty. The bottom's still really white, you know? One of those motherfuckers. <laughs> Buy my prune juice from the same store. I just want to live my best life. I go home on a Monday night after a solid game of bingo. Turn on a good Monday night football game and they tell me I can't call the Redskins the Redskins, I'm losing my shit. 
I'm flipping out. Because part of why I went to war is to be racist as fuck in my living room. <laughs> Whole reason why I kill people. That's like if I turn on the TV tomorrow and they told me I had to spell Kool-Aid with a C. I'd be like, why would a C? I've been spelling this shit with a K my entire fucking life. Thank you so much. It's been really dope. Thank you.